Hi everyone, it's uh, Grant Abbott speaking and I'm here with Michael Jeffries, our CFO and um, I think Tony Anamoulis from Abbott and Morley is online as well. So we've got a very intimate session today um, and hopefully you've put your hand up if you can hear me, there's no sound issues, but uh, I'm using my computer sound. So thank you everyone for raising your hand. Um, what I'm going to do today is we're going to look through, um, many of you or some of you may have used the LYD will, which is our simple or basic will uh, in the past, particularly as it relates to enduring powers of attorney. So what I thought I'd do is, particularly with all the COVID-19, we've just been smashed off the last six or seven weeks into this absolutely huge depressive mood. You know, things are down, we're all worried about that. You know, I, I shake my head sometimes up here in Queens, so I'm sure you do, Michael, as well, that you know, we've only had 1,000 cases and six deaths um, to uh, COVID-19 over that time, and we've shut down the whole economy and, and got rid of virtually a lot of tourism. But, you know, it is what it is, but we need to then go the next step um, and really start to focus in on where we can deliver really great value for our clients. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you today, we haven't changed the prices, and I think this is absolutely amazing uh, what we are offering here. Um, is that you'll not only be able to do one will, but you'll be able to do two wills um, for virtually the same price. Um, so again, we're, we're making sure we're well and truly um, in front of the pack. And for those of you who are into the estate planning, obviously our LY Protect, our $3.95 a month, um, is uh, just look, it's unbelievable value. And I keep on saying we should increase it, but we probably will in the next three or four months. Um, anyway, You'll see as we go through, well, I've made some quite fundamental changes, uh, particularly as a result of a, a lot of feedback from uh, Martin Hartness uh, over in Perth uh, and also a number of other people. So I'm continually evolving it. For those who've been through our process with investment strategies to see where it started um, six or seven months ago to where now it is completely the industry leader, I've yet to see another investment strategy to date which actually details the members' names, their ages, their employment status, whether they've got insurance or not, whether they're taking a pension, and more importantly, what their retirement objectives are. Now, you might say, well, that's all over the top, but it is what the commissioner requires. So as I see it, that there's hardly any um, really investment strategies out there that are really meeting the market. But I know ours not only meets the market, but thanks to our automations, um, that in fact exceeds it. And that's what we're starting to bring to uh, the wills, our protectors, um, our wills with testamentary trusts and EPOA. So it's a very exciting time for us. Um, and also um, through the ability to do automations, it also means when you charge, you can do things quickly. So your return on your time or effectively your charge out rate increases exponentially. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Now, Australia needs your help. So this is like a call, a clarion call to all of you. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, for those of you who've seen this before, I'm not gonna go into it in any great detail, but um, the case over in uh, Perth, uh, which was Miller's case, um, Andre Taylor versus Angela Miller. Well, Andre Taylor wasn't, it was the executor uh, of Andre Taylor. And effectively a simple $600,000 estate was ravaged by um, at the time of the Supreme Court hearing uh, was ravaged by $500,000 of fees and that didn't even include the, the fees payable for the estate. That was only the whip to date. So it didn't matter what was going on or what the, the judge ended up um, uh, stating was his final decision. It was all immaterial because there was nothing left in the fund. You know, but from our perspective, um, look, COVID-19 has been an attack. It's the invisible enemy, as they say. Um, it's had a huge impact on our society. Um, whether I, <laughs> I met uh, someone the other day, um, my personal trainer, I hadn't seen him for a while, shook his hand and he sort of looked at me aghast. It was, well, I mean, if there's there's virtually no cases in, in um, uh, Queensland anymore, you know, what, I'm not gonna go back and not touch people. It's interesting though, we're now starting to get that. And uh, Queensland's a little bit more relaxed. so. Whether we go down that track, I'm not sure, but certainly there's gonna be societal changes. Uh, but for that, we've given up our economic, personal and financial freedoms. We're basically being put in imprisonment. I don't think people really understand that in the long run. And uh, we're all, all coming out of it, but um, for us, um, you know, our estate and also our ongoing planning has been brought into sharp focus. 
I mean, for example, how many of your clients, how many of your staff don't actually have an enduring power of attorney um, or even a will? Um, and even those that do, um, and if you've ever seen a lot of people have those news agent wills, uh, which are an absolute disaster, or a will that's been drafted by a lawyer years ago. Um, I saw one just recently, um, and the lawyer, and this we're talking about a major, major law firm who profess their estate planning prowess, didn't even look at what happens with the uh, trusteeship or the corporate trustees of both the discretionary trust, family trust, um, and also the self-managed super fund, because if they find their way into the estate um, and like the Miller and Taylor case, it's, it's basically uh, heads down, uh, legal knives out for five years, um, those trusts and SMSFs are gonna be absolutely decimated. No one will be able to do anything with them. And that's simply because the shares are, are fall into the estate. So we need to work through a lot of those sort of um, areas for us um, and really start to build up our our capital knowledge, um, you know, our armory of strategies of what we can and cannot do. And that's certainly where we are different to everyone else um, in the marketplace. Um, we believe that from your perspective that with the Lightyear Docs and also the close conjunction with Abbott and Morley Lawyers, that, the, that we can bring a really good solution to your business where you control the process you're not breaching the Legal Professions Act because of the process that we're using, the automation we're doing. You're building awesome wills and EPOAs. Um, you're gonna be able to charge premium fees less than what lawyers normally charge, but they're still premium for you in terms of hours worked. Um, and finally, at the end of the day, you're looking after a client's family. Um, and uh, you can do not only couples wills, you can build it out to whole family wills and EPOAs. And for me, that is a, that's a really important point because once you start to dive into the personal uh, family affairs, finding out who's the black sheep of the family, you know, who's the ne'er-do-well, who's the one who spends a lot. Once you start getting into that, you become the trusted advisor. So what I want to take you through is a simple process um, for doing these um, uh, business-wise for you. So I'm going to go in and show you how to do it a little bit later on, but let's go through the process. So. The first thing is we wanna go in and get, have a look at our client engagement letter and email. So the client is not aware that you are in this process with Abbott Morley. Um, and again, it's, it's important to say that you are involved with Abbott Morley. We've got that in the client engagement letter. Many of you have seen that. Um, so, and I wanna give you a little bit of a twist on that. So we send out the letter um, and you should be sending out the letter and say, look, um, you need to get your wills, um, your EPOAs, and your EPOAs should also, if you have a look at ours, uh, covers um, the trusteeship of the superannuation fund. Uh, and also includes, for example, if you're directors of any companies, and that would include uh, trustee companies for the super fund of discretionary trust, um, how the EPOA can be appointed um, as a director. So again, we are the only, the only firm I believe in the world that actually has that process. So we've built it in, we're building, obviously an EPOA can't go and boot out someone as a director and appoint themselves. We've done it all through a link between the Enduring Powers of Attorney, the CIS Act, where we're looking at Superfund, and also the Corporations Act. So we've worked long and hard on that. And again, we're the only people in the world to do that, but it is absolutely vital for um, your clients. Now, the thing about the data capture that we have in the past, what I would suggest is that if you leave it open and, and clients um, come down and say, look, yeah, I want the will and EPOA. Now the clients are aware of what Zoom is and particularly, you know, the, the um, I think the social distancing has been great for that, that you can have Zoom meetings with the clients. And I did one just recently um, that you can be um, having a Zoom, you show the client your face, you don't share your screen. So that's the first thing, you don't share your screen. And then simply, when I go through and ask the questions a little bit later on, you're going to be able to sit down and actually ask them the interview questions from the Lightyear Docs um, portal. And from that, you're then gonna be in a really good position to um, complete the whole LYD will and also the EPOA. So the next step is, is it gonna be a single or a double will? So is it just uh, one uh, person or is it all also their spouse as well? That's an issue for you to have a look at. But again, work out your pricing for both. And I've got something for you a little bit later on. So then we enter the data. So as I said, you can do that while you're on the Zoom with the clients. Go through, talk to them, enter the data. 
if you're a bit like me and I'm going to do it both and I'm hopeless when it comes around to typing on the, on the fly, but simply, if you want, ask the questions. Um, and while you're asking the questions, have one of your staff um, completing the interview form for you. And look, you, you're going to find you only need 45 minutes to an hour max. In fact, some of them have taken me 20 minutes uh, to complete. And the rest of the time I've had to um, just extend the WAF a little bit, find out a bit more of their family. Um, so what you want to do is we'll go through the process, uh, get the PDF document that's uh, generated, uh, use a PDF system like Nitro that I use. I think Adobe does that. What do you use, Michael, for, uh, for your PDF stuff? If you want, I use Adobe. Yeah, so Michael uses Adobe. I like Nitro. Put a watermark on it. You can make small minor changes in there. Um, and then the, the next step is to send it to the client um, with a, and, and don't send it straight away. I mean, virtually you've got to give it to them straight away. But what you'd want to do is send it in a day or two, book an appointment with them. Um, so get on the phone, say you've completed it uh, with Abbott Morley, book in a time for execution of it, send it to them in draft, um, and then make sure they've looked at it, um, get that execution time, book that in, and look, if need be, you know, feel free to get Tony um, in on that Zoom. Uh, and if there's a, a couple of wills and EPOAs, um, then it's only $495 sign-off from Abbott Morley, which is extremely inexpensive. So we'll look over your work and help you through that process. Now, this uh, I'm going to show you through our, our LYD will, which is our simple or basic will. Um, if you've got, um, look, uh, if you've been previously married, there's problem children, you've been through uh, the list with me on eligible persons, which virtually includes uh, grandchildren, uh, children, uh, former marriages, spouses, anyone who's remotely financially dependent, including brothers and sisters uh, on the testator, they could all come in and effectively um, uh, place an action under family provisions claims. Um, so, and if they want testamentary trust, Again, you, can, you won't be using the system I'll be using, you'll be using the LYD will and the testamentary trust, which is also going through an upgrade and I'll release that next week. But from that perspective, you are gonna to need to have sign off from Adam and Morley because if there's a chance of family provision claim, you don't wanna be caught in the hot seat. So again, just have a chat with Tony and Amulis um, in relation to that. Um, and uh, let's go down to the next one. Um, We've got, now, this is what I've done, and I've thought, this is a time to actually start to look at what the bottom line is if we take on this, this business, because we're so be we've been so busy in terms of, um, you know, the COVID-19, getting the JobKeeper and all of that. But at the end of the day, a lot of our clients, um, right or wrongly, um, will see, this, see these things as compliance. Um, now, you might do some tax planning for year-end, you do compliance, but people always begrudge in terms of compliance costs. What we're looking here is actually bringing value to the table. And I must admit, I love the way Tim does it, um, is to say, well, you know, if you're using the protector and it's, sh it's sheltering a couple million dollars, what's that worth to you? I mean, you're looking at a huge um, saving there. So what I've got up here is, um, before I jump in and show you the process, um, if you have your LYD client wills, and I'm looking at per couple as opposed to individuals. So if you do two per month, that means that at $1,600 per couple, so that is, and typically a standard fee, and this is a, a legal fee, a basic will uh, without a testamentary trust is probably seven, $770. An EPOA is 330 So you're looking around about $1,100. So for a couple, that's 2200 so what I'm suggesting there is give a discount for a couple of $1,600 for both the client will and the EPOA there, which for me is absolute reasonable fee, but you can adjust it, work out what your pricing is. I'll send this table through. Gosh, even I'd be able to do a spreadsheet on this really quickly to work it out. Now, importantly for us is that how long does it take us to actually do this process? So if you think you're doing the interview, bang, 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 you go through that uh, process, um, you complete it with a client, send it off to them, then they come in, uh, you might do some minor changes, then they come in for execution. You know, it should be maximum two to three hours, maximum two to three hours. For me, I can do it easily in probably an hour and a half. Um, the execution doesn't, obviously doesn't take long. You just get them in, sign it off, and then off you're running. So two hours is probably top, you could do three. Importantly though, 
for that two hours, if you're doing $1,600, that works out as being um, effectively $800 per hour. Now, I'm not sure about many um, accounts or planners out there, but $800 per hour for good, honest, solid, strategic um, EPO will making is, is of great use. Um, so if, we're, if we took just two um, um, clients, so at the end of the year, you've just done 24 clients and you have a look through all your database, how many clients actually need this service, then your fees will be 38,400. Um, if you did six, which is effectively probably what, you know, two a week or like one and a half a week, I don't know how you do a half, that's your annual total. If you do 10 per month, then it's $160,000. Now, once we get into it, so that's your, that's your base. So anyone could deal that base when I mean, you have a look at it. So that's going to be uh, effectively 12 times 20. So you're looking at 240 hours for $160,000. So that for me is a, that's a pretty good um, opportune time. And you're going to end up loving these sort of days. In fact, it's not a bad idea just to um, slog off uh, Fridays, which are always a bit lazy day, to just make those estate planning days. So that's the day you see your clients, you focus on estate planning. Because the next one you want to get, get up to is um, really you, you'll find for the higher value clients uh, that the protector is the one that really makes a huge difference if you've seen that. Because effectively you're taking all your assets into a family protection trust or a bloodline trust and from there, that, that perspective is there's not a huge amount in terms of the, um, the will and the EPOA. Um, there's certainly some great instances of it. But again, um, you'll find that our pricing for the protector is typically with a legal firm such as Cleary Hall, they charge $6,000 for that. So if you can come in at $4,500, which includes client wills and EPOA, that's a, that's a very, very reasonable fee. In fact, I would probably say you should, be, should probably be up about $6,500. But I'm just giving you an idea of what that costing is. And I'm assuming there you've got really, um, if you have a look through your client base, anyone who's in a business, been married before, got significant assets with potential threat of litigation, uh, has a family provisions claim, they all need to have the protector. I mean, there's no ifs and buts. They absolutely need to have the protector. So you, you know your clients do the sums and then work it out. So again, you can start to see adding the protector to this lot um, effectively has a really good um, a process for you. So let's go through, um, I'm gonna flip this up. Uh, you're on the uh, Lightyear Docs site. Um, so what happens, I'm gonna press this button. This is a strategy center. What this does is take us, you can see up there, Zendesk, which is like our support center. Um, so when we go in here, um, you've got all your webinars and training videos. So this one, the one I did yesterday, which is a great one on property development, which structures you use, which was actually shown in uh, SMSF uh, magazine or the email last night. Um, but this one will be coming up here. This in, in fact, this exact um, uh, webinar will be up and running earlier or probably early this afternoon, which would be pretty exciting. What I wanted to do though is remember uh, we want to go through, and this is what I'm telling you, this is exactly what I would do from a business perspective. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I've done that. Go into your strategy info advice toolkits, uh, which we've got uh, in here. We go into our client letters. We look at our protector kit, the real estate and lending letters. That's going to build up a lot uh, later. Our estate planning uh, kit. So we want our client during a power of attorney will, will uh, with uh, data capture. I want to then go and download that. Uh, that comes up here. Um, what I'm going to do is there's a whole lot of blurb around this. You can actually see I'm just updating the suit, uh, which is going to be super special. That's the beauty about our system. We can go in and update it, add things uh, whenever we want. So you've got a bit of a blurb there. Uh, but essentially what I'd be doing is I'll just show you, get rid of all this crapola. Uh, crapola, 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 crapola. Um, I would then take this X, get rid of this, uh, must do. Okay, control C, um, I would then go up. And if I'm, I'm just looking if you're in a MailChimp, if you're using MailChimp, if you haven't got a, a um, if you haven't got a, um, uh, if you haven't got a, a what's the name, a EDM or like MailChimp, 
just um, have a chat with Ashley, Ash at uh, I Love SMSF, and uh, she can actually, um, uh, she can help you uh, set that up. So just do this, I prefer the email. So this goes out to all your clients. So to all your clients um, through MailChimp. So must do enduring powers, power, powers of attorney and wills. Um, heads up if you wanted to do that. Just do your own thing. So you got through, you've got all the copy there, so you don't need to do anything. I would go through that process. Um, and then you've got here, we're very busy at the moment, but our clients see uh, top of the list, along with Abbott Morley, we can provide the three-step process for, you can either put the process in there for a very low fee, depending on your assets. So you can change all this. And obviously they're put for a very low fee, depending on your assets. Um, if you'd like your children and spouse to come leave, we have a special family offering. Call us um, now to make an appointment or simply email me and we get this sorted quickly and efficiently. Okay, so go through that. At this point, we suggest you complete. So I wouldn't do this. Um, I would get back because, again, I prefer get the appointment, do a Zoom, um, and then let's go through that process. Um, book and appointment. Yeah. So let's go through that process. So we've got that. There's no data capture. So they've gone in, they've booked the appointment. Does everyone follow that one? So we're just going to send that out. So I'm going to send this to, um, I think, Michael, you're on there, Michael Samu. There you go, mate. I'm going to give you, there. I want you to send that letter out, mate. Um, and I want you to um, uh, flip that out to uh, all your clients uh, today. So I'll send you that one um, and we'll take that from there. Um, the other one that I want to have a look at is now we're going to go into the system. I'm going to show you what we've got, which is um, a little bit different. So we go back in, we've sent that out. The clients have booked in um, some time. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll send that to you, Catherine, as well. Do you want to just shoot me your email? I'll, I'll send all this email to you guys anyway, but you just want to shoot me your email quickly and I'll put that in with Michael as well. So again, you've got to watch out, Catherine. You can't duck out when you're in, in a session with me. I'll come back. I've got Michael Salmon. I think I've got Catherine there. Oh, there we go. Sweet. So it's off. You guys are off and running. Flick that out and watch it come back. So the next one we've got, though, is we're back at our Lightyear Docs. So what I need to do is scroll down to my um, uh, estate planning. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my LYD will. I won't worry about the EPOA at the moment. So I'm in there. A lot of you guys are on, um, you're obviously on the unlimited. So for us, the unlimited, you can be on the firm, you can be on the um, strategist, which is your CPD as well, or if you're just using estate planning. So we start the document. Um, I'm going to actually do it for you. So I'm going to put it into my conference folder. Um, I can add a new folder. See, this is a whole brand new system for us. So you've got all your client folders there. Do a test folder. I'm just putting in my conference one. Or if you wanted to, you could put um, add a new folder. And I'll call this estate planning. So now I've got a new folder. Bingo, bango, bongo. I've got estate planning. You can see it's the last one. I start it in this document that goes into estate planning. Now, because it's now sitting in our vault, you need to give it a good reference. And I'm just going to go through. So again, uh, just bearing in mind, this is like we're being live at the moment. So I'm going to call it the um, uh, the, the Smith um, Will and the, just, we'll just call it the Smith Will couple. Okay, so uh, because it's, what I would suggest is as we're dealing with um, a will, use the Abbott Morley logo. So use the Abbott Morley logo, it's important. Now what we've got to do is this is where the guts of it is. This is where the really uh, good information is. In fact, what I would be doing is um, I would be going in and I'll show you. I'm just going to save this, so finish. 
I just want to show you something. So I've, you've seen I've put nothing in there at all. So it's gone in clean. It's now sitting in my system. So I go in, go into my vault, into the limit. You can see in your state planning there I've got is that. I open that up and then see the relaunch button there. So I've got that there. So now I'm going back in. So what I'm suggesting is that if you're doing it with an admin staff, so you come in, swan in, you're going to ask all the interviews. So what we want to do is we want to put on, get your admin staff beforehand to put in all the details of the common party. So the first one is the um, test data. So in this one, it's going to be John Smith. You know, he's um, 65 years of age. And then we're going to add another. So I'll just add another. Now we put in his wife, um, Sally Smith. Um, they've been married for a long time, so we don't really need to worry about a testamentary trust at this stage. Now it may come in a little bit later, but who knows. We then go and add another. So we've got the first lot. Remember, we're setting up executives as well. So we need to work out, well, um, who's, his, who's his children? So we've got his Max Smith. Um, Max lives at uh, 100 Brown Street, Melbourne, in that lockdown state. God, Melbourne's just crazy, isn't it? Talk about police brutality, but anyway. Um, we've then got Max, and he's got two children. He's got Brian Smith, and again, it's 100 Brown Street. Uh, we are making, uh, sorry, Melbourne, we are looking at uh, automations um, to um, make this a lot easier, can you believe it? I mean, how easy is it anyway? Uh, we've then got uh, Jane Smith, which is Max's child. So again, 100 Brown Street. Actually, I'm not too bad at typing. It must be this early in the morning. It's pretty good. Now we go down, add another. So we've then got um, John and Sally's other children. Um, and we've got Garrett Smith. He still lives at home with his mum. He's 40 years of age. You know, one of those kids. Always going to live at home. I, I always to have some my brother who used to live at home all the time. And then I ended up living at home with mum for um, a couple of years. Anyway, Susan. Smith is the other daughter. She lives in 100 Manningham. Oh, that's where I lived at um, when I was a kid. Manningham Road. Pauline, Victoria. I'm not sure what the postcode is. We'll go through one, two, two. Okay, and then we're going to add another. So we've got um, James. Jones, who is his best mate, is also going to be an executor. So 100 Jones Street, um, Sydney, New South Wales, 2000. Okay, so that's that's where the hard and fast is. So if you've got all that, then um, get your admin staff to do it. Then you can go through with your clients. So remember, they're seeing you on screen. They're not seeing the share screen. So you've got the screen. You just have to ask the questions. It's not that a thing. So you say, look, um, I just want to confirm your address, John. You know, you're still living at Smith Street. Sally, you know, there. Um, eldest son, Max, uh, his address we've got down on file is Brown Street. Is that correct? Um, he's got two kids, Brian and, and also Jane. Uh, is there any other children coming down the track? Um, now, your other kids, I uh, understand Jarrett, um, who's still living at home with you. You know, Susan's there, um, and also understand that you want, you, you know, James Jones. Now, you probably don't know about James at, at this point in time, um, so you can always fill that in. Um, you can always add another if you want. He might say, well, hold on, now, you know, I want to include Fred Nurk um, or Fred Smith, who is a um, child. Billy Street, Brisbane, Queensland, and he's from another marriage, from his first marriage. So the Sally only finds out at that time. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, so do we know the date? Um, leave the date because you don't need to know. We're sending this in draft to the client. 
So would you like to make another will for the spouse? Absolutely, yes. And you can see that that now pops up a separate level. Okay, now let's get into it. So who's the testator? That's easy, that's John Smith. Now you need to put your details in here because you're gonna run the whole process. Okay, so we put that in there, that'll pop up. We then go through the executors. So we've got here, Max um, is the executor. So we put that in there. Now we wanna add another. So rather than just have Max, we also wanna put in his best mate, um, which is James Jones as well. So colleague, who will also run as executors. So we've got dual executors there. Now, successor, if those guys are dead, um, and remember, if only one of them dies, it passes, it's not available, passes the other one. So let's go, we'll go Sally, um, and then we'll add another one. Now, we don't need to put their details in because they're, they're the second line. So we've got Sally and also Susan, his other daughter. Now, we're not putting Jared because he's a bit of a no hoper. Uh, we've got the second successor um, ex executor. I would go no because, you know, the chance of going down further it's up to you. Now I've got binding vote because we've made um, obviously joint, so choose. So obviously let's go, um, Max is gonna look after the family. And if this is the case, then obviously uh, my wife, uh, Sally. Now specific gifts. Now, so is there specific gifts? Let's go yes. Now who's actually gonna pay for that? So that's for example, duties and taxes. Let's make a choice. Is it gonna be piled onto the estate or the beneficiary? Let's go to the estate. Um, and now let's go into the gifts themselves. So this is important. Is the specific gift uh, to be shared equally by the executor amongst beneficiaries or is it be gifted directly to a beneficiary? So each time we do this, we have to do it. So let's go first off, we've got uh, my personal effects and let's get this jewelry. Um, so if I do that one, um, and then I go add another. So now I'm gonna to give to Max, because this is why this common party system is really important. So I'm gonna give Max, who's a male, because this comes up. Um, so so that's the only specific one. I'll add another one. Is it to go out generally? No, we'll go no. So I'm going to choose there my um, uh, grandson, Brian, who's going to choose grandson, Brian, who's going to get his Jag convertible which is always said Dad was going to give it to me. So Jack and Brittle, and that's it. So we've got, we've got all our specific gifts. Now, this is where we've come in a new vein in, the, um, in our LYD will. First off, we've got couples, but now we've got specific beneficiaries. So who's going to be the principal? Obviously, Sally is the principal. She is the spouse. Now, if she's not alive, you've got three choices. Is it going to be paid to her children that's held on the trust? Well, that's generally, I'll put that in there for minors. So I'd say no. Um, is it going to go any surviving principal beneficiary? Well, she's the main principal beneficiary. So what I do is I'd be paid to the second beneficiary. Now I can add another principal beneficiary, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to flip to left, see that? And I'm going to go to second beneficiaries. So with the second beneficiaries, um, I'm going to choose Max, who's in there who's Max, is the son, and he's got kids, so it's actually gonna to go to his children if he's not alive. Does that make sense? Now, I'm gonna add another because I also wanna get in there the other um, children. We've got, um, not Brian or Jane, that's the grandchildren. Uh, we've got Jarrett, who's member still living at home, he's the son. Um, now, in the event that he's not alive, we wanna pay it to other surviving secondary beneficiaries in equal proportions. I'm gonna add another there. Um, and then you just to be discussing that. So, okay, so we've put in Jarrett, and this is what I'll be saying. Um, now you've got your other daughter, Susan, do you want her to be a second beneficiary? Yes, I do. Um, so she's your daughter. Now, 
do you, has she got any children? No. Um, do you want her, hers to actually go to another level of beneficiaries or just simply pay back into uh, both Jarrett and Max's hands if she's not alive? So if they say that, then you just put that one in there. Now, if none of those are alive, then we go down to the tertiary beneficiary, then what we can do there is we might make that Fred Smith. So again, that's the, um, let's say that's the adopted son. Um, and again, um, we can go to any other tertiary beneficiary, but if he's the only one, um, then that's okay. Otherwise, just be paid to any bloodline beneficiary. So it is, is that simple. Um, so uh, Ed, does the Wills Estate Planning cater for related entities? No, you can't cater for um, trusts. Sorry, it caters for potentially companies, um, but it can't cater for trusts uh, specifically. What I could do though, if you wanted to, Ed, if we're looking at companies, we go back to not these, I'd go back to specific gifts. Um, so I would go in um, here, I go my specific gift um, here, I'd add another and I would say my shares in my SMSF and discretionary trust companies. And I would go no, and who does that go to? So therefore that could go to Max. So that's how I would handle that one. So now the shares are now controlled by Max who will then uh, effectively have control um, of that. Um, so that's an, an important from that perspective. So that was a good question. That, that's how I would handle that. But the trust itself, um, he'll be able to come in and do that, but you need to handle it by way of the appointorship. We could, for example, um, it's very difficult because the will doesn't override it. But again, if I wanted to do another um, gift, I could add another. Sorry, he's got to go mail. Um, I'd add another. I'd go no. I could go max and I go mail and I would say um, max is to be appointed as the appointor of the appointor of my discretionary As I said, this will be um, this is being recorded, so you're going to get a copy. But that's that's what I would do there. You can see that um, pops up um, in that perspective. Now I've gone down to the tertiary uh, child guardianship. Um, now if I went yes, then I can put in obviously who the children are, the guardian, second, you know, first and second. But you know we're dealing with John, so it's not going to be the case. Uh, pet guardianship. Um, are there any pets that require nomination? I'd go yes. I'd go. Sally Smith, a pet type, we've got dog, and then we've got bozo, we'll call him bozo. I've got a couple of dogs and they're bozos at times. Um, you know, $5,000 for pet expenses. We then go down, the final one is funeral condition, uh, funeral wishes, yes, um, to be thrown into the ocean at Beach. Um, so that's okay. So we've done that. So that's the funeral there. So now we're going to the spouse's will. Does everyone follow that one? So this is a double will we've got here. So I go to the testator, which is obviously going to be Sally. Now these are not mirror wills, um, mainly because they, they can be completely changes. If you think that um, Sally is going to, or sorry, if that um, John's going to be the first one to go, then Sally's going to have a completely different will. It doesn't make sense if it's all going to go to John. So let's go through the advisor. Um, again, Michael Samu of Big Accounts. Now, I think it's important anyway, because you're trying to bolster and show the service, that first off, if you're dealing with a client, say, okay, well, I'm dealing with John. Now you turn to Sally. Sally, you've heard what John said. So let's go through yours. Now, the executors, um, you know, do you want... Um, John to be your executor in the event of death? And you go, yes, so that's the husband. Um, is he just gonna be by himself or is he gonna maybe have Max there? So she'll say, well, no, just by himself. So let's make, who do you want the, the next client? Well, let's make Max. And she might say, well, I'd like to also have Max 
um, and also my other daughters, um, my other daughter Susan as well, um, as being my executor. Our second successor executor, do you need one? Well, what happens if they'll die? Well, yes, I, I'd like to have one. I'll put in it again because I know it's really straight up. We're going to put in um, James Jones there, who's a, a good mate. Um, so we've got that second successor. Do I need a third? No, nah, not really. I think, gosh, if they're all dead, then COVID 19's taken everyone. Uh, binding vote. Um, let's go a max um, there. You can see I'm running off the left hand side here. You can either, either just simply go next if you want. Uh, specific gifts. Have you got any specific gifts? Um, yes. If you want to pay the estate? Yes. Let's go through the gifts. Uh, again, um, do you want to just share all your jewellery and everything? Absolutely. And let, let your um, executor, um, being John, and if John's not around, um, it's going to be Max and also Susan, you can see on the side. Sarah can read it on the side. So they'll distribute it fairly across all your estate. Would you like that? So absolutely. My personal effects and jewellery. Is there anything else you've got there um, at all? And she might say, oh, yeah. I never spell it right. Oh my God. Jewel. There we go. Plus my artwork and competition trophies. So, again, this is how it's different from the other one. Now, have you got any other specific gifts like cars or whatever? So, yeah, I don't mind. I might actually. What I'll do is I'll, I'm going to give to my, um, because I saw that John gave his convertible to Brian. Well, I'd like to give my granddaughter my um, um, Aston Martin, her grandma, right? Aston Martin uh, is to go, as a female, is to go to Jane Smith. So we go through that process, as you can see there. Now, the specific gifts start off first, and then we're left as executor, which is going to be Max and Susan. And you explain this to them, they're going to have to look at everything else. So who do you want? So obviously, we'll put John in there. He's your husband. Um, and if he's alive, then we'll um, obviously, um, if he's not alive, then we pay to the secondary beneficiaries. So um, who do you want to be the second beneficiaries? Now, she might say, well, no, look, everyone else is, is doing quite well. Um, I just want to make, I just want to have um, our adopted son, Fred Smith looked after. Um, and also, um, again, if, if he's not alive to any surviving second beneficiary, uh, which I'm also going to make my Jared, who's living at home, you know, because he loves his mum. The other kids, they're okay, you know, they're being looked after, particularly if it's if John dies first. Um, and then, you know, if uh, Jared's not uh, alive, then it's going to go back to Fred. Now, tertiary, if, if uh, all those guys aren't alive, then what I'm going to do is, what about um, making the other guys, so for example, Max, the, the beneficiary, and go to go to the tertiary, add another, who's then going to be um, Susan, uh, daughter, um, and again, uh, surviving beneficiary. Otherwise, it ends up going to bloodline anyway. So we've gone through that. Child guardianship, um, obviously, no for that one. Uh, we keep on going down. Pet guardianship uh, will go, yes, um, that's to go to, um, that's to go to Susan Smith. Pet type, Laura Key. Cedar, um, um, pet insurance or five years out of estate proceeds. Okay, so we've got we've got that pet guardianship. The final one is funeral wishes. Do you want any funeral wishes? She'll go, no, I'll leave it up to my thing. And that's it. So we've effectively just done two wills. But as you said, if, if I've got my, if you can see, if I've got my share screen down, I can go through, I can have a bit of a chat about them because I know who they've chosen, who they haven't chosen, so on and so forth. Now, then I can download all the documents and there's going to be um, uh, two sets of documents here. So you can see there we've got the Abbott Morley one. We've got the last will and testament for John Smith. Um, 
we then go down, we don't know the date, but when they come back to do the execution, I'm just going to relaunch that, put that date in and have it up and running. So as for John Smith, again, however, it does not seek to influence or direct any trust um, uh, or super fund that I have, because that's illegal at law. Um, so the first one is intro, not going to impact trust uh, or SMSF, I'm going to revoke um, and declare this in my last form and testament. I point my executives, remember, it's Max and my business colleague, James Jones. Each must consent to their appointment. Where there more than one, then Max would have the binding vote. Now, if they're not able, then it goes to Sally and Susan. With Sally, they have a binding vote. So, again, we've just gone down two. We can go down uh, three or more if we want. Uh, Catherine, uh, do we have an EPOA to cover ACT? Yes, we do. Um, so that's available in our OYD will and uh, Canberra as well. Um, so uh, does it leave the assets of the second beneficiaries in equal proportion? Uh, yes, it does. If you want to vary the percentages, um, I haven't worked out that one. That's a good question. Normally you do that through specific gifts, but leave that with me, Catherine. Um, again, we're always open to suggestions um, and that if we've got second, we could put in percentages there. So leave that with me. I'll work on that um, on the weekend. But really good suggestion. I'm just making a note in my pad at the moment. So just give me a second. I'll come back and I'll, I'll put that in. So that's really good. Again, you can see there the provision of advice. You're going to make the business management investment decisions. So that's got to be an ordinary hourly rate. Now, the initial administration, so the executives appointed go through probate, but they're going to call in, convert monies and the estates so on. They're going to deal with the balance of the estate. So uh, they're going to pay all testamentary exp ex expenses. If there's insolvency, then obviously it's not going to be divisible amongst creditors. Now we've got all our beneficiaries uh, that we've we've got in there as well. Remember we filled in all of that um, that stuff there, um, and then we've got a specific gifts. Uh, remember we said it's on a fair and reasonable. So this is his personal effects and jewellery. But Max Smith, um, he's to take um, full and complete investment property um, in Coolum Beach, uh, Queensland. Um, if he doesn't survive by 30 days, then it just folds in back into the uh, major estate. Um, in fact, I might put those little three headings in there as well. Do you want it to go to your children um, or go back to the major estate? So leave that with me. Again, I'll, I'll think about building that out as well. Brian Smith, um, that's the uh, grandson gets the JA convertible. Um, and then Max Smith, that was the issue. Remember, Ed, we put in there the shares in the SMSF and discretionary trust. It's a specific gift, which is a better way to do it. Um, and then I put in this, although it's not that, you can't do that through the will, uh, but at least you're putting a wish in there anyway. Um, and then here, any reasonable expenses, including duties and taxes would be borne by the estate, or we can put a beneficiary. Remember, I went through that one. So we've done all our gifts, everything's out. Let's go through the principal beneficiary. If my spouse, Sally Smith, survives by 30 days, my executor shall hold the remaining estate, including any superannuation benefits after any specific gift you can do specific gifts of super, pay to the estate the benefit of Sally. If Sally's not alive, then it goes down to secondary beneficiaries under clause eight. Now here we've got principal beneficiary, my son, Mark Smith, Jarrett and daughter, Susan, um, shall hold the remaining estate. And that's obviously going to be in equal proportions. Uh, what I will do though, Catherine, which is a great suggestion, I might in fact start to put percentages in there, or do you want to have percentages? You remember how we did the dot? If they do want a percentages, then they can press um, a percentage, um, and then that will follow from there. Um, now, if Max Smith is um, not alive, the share of the estate is to pass to the children. If Jarrett's not alive, it's to go to the surviving secondary, and the same as surviving. Then we go down to the tertiary, Fred Smith. Um, in the event there is no blood beneficiaries immediately identified, the executive may distribute the remainder of the deceased estate to any person who shares the same DNA. So that's our catch-all. Pet guardianship, the old bozo goes to Sally. She's get $5,000 for pet expenses, your funeral wishes, and then you've got your general powers and, um, of the executor, which is all the powers, authorities, and discretion of the natural person, so on and so forth. So that's pretty self-standard. That's the general. And then we've got specific powers in there, which, you know, obtain valuations, distribute any of my estate um, to any debt or security, employ professional advisors, you know, submit to arbitration, you know, determine net income. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff that's sitting in there. And effectively, um, that's your, um, uh, the will that's executed by the testator with a couple of witnesses there. Um, and also you get executed by the uh, executor as well. So give them a heads up. It's only the first line. 
And then we go through, we've got Sally's one as well. So we've got Sally's there, um, you're sitting in there, bang, you know, it's the same sort of thing. We can see there's a bit of difference there. So that's uh, what we do. Um, then I'm gonna save that. Um, so I'll save that as, um, I will do that as a sample. That's quite a good idea. Um, so I'll actually put this um, LYD will or Apple A2020. So I'll just save that. Um, and then what I do is I would then open, this is my um, open, I'd go into computer, I would look in browse, go into Lightyear docs, Look in docs, um, look in uh, samples. Um, you can see there is the LYD open there. And it's the last form of testament. So I would then put in there um, and then I would review. Um, I would then, from that perspective, let me just go through on a, sorry, review. Um, and then what I would do, put a stamp on it. Um, it depends on what you want to do. Um, I can do, you can choose any of those or you can just um, create a new stamp. It depends on what system you're doing. Um, I would say um, for the will, um, put it in draft. Um, draft for immediate pension. Okay, so I'll do that. Um, you can put a bit of opacity there. Um, and then I've got draft for immediate attention. And then I would go down to Sally's and I would go that. Then I would save that. Um, so I'd then save that, put it in the client folder. And then I'll just put it into, Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll put it into downloads. Okay, so that is now saved and then you send that off to the client. And that's essentially um, what we've got um, out of the, the whole process. So you can see we're now getting a lot more intuitive and I think personally, um, really, if you have a look at it, um, that Zoom idea is great because you can have an interview. And the same thing is, look, you can go through the interview process with a client if they're face to face but you can see if you're just sharing um, that all you have to do is just engage them. You know, you've got this one, I've got that one. What do you want to do here? What do you want to do there? That took me, what, 25 minutes to do. Um, and it's really quick. The big timing on all of it, if I go back in um, and let's say they're coming in next week. So you've sent it off to them. They've come back. They're coming in next uh, Friday. They're happy with it. You're going to go through the process again. I relaunch it there. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is put the date on it. They've made a couple of changes, uh, which you can insert at any point in time. So I'm gonna go in, uh, I've got the dates general. So we're actually gonna make it next Friday. So they're coming in to sign it off. Um, and then you're basically off and running from there. So you can go in and make those changes if you want. As I said, you the main timing is actually gonna be on putting these people in. If you get your um, admin staff to put it in, or better still, um, if they can put it in there, then you're really you're going to save a, a, a lot of time on that process. So let me just finish off the final slide. You can start to see there um, how quickly these things can be done uh, for you. And the good thing about it is you only need half an hour or maximum an hour of a client's time, and then virtually it's it's often running. Um, you can generally I wouldn't recommend um, doing a digital um, signature. But in this case, if they, they don't want to come in face to face, um, we're happy to do digital signatures. Or more importantly, you know, as I said, get Tony um, there, um, get, uh, get Tony in there, um, and he can actually sign it off for you, particularly if you want to get through that process. Now, um, obviously, some of you are on our LY strategist, um, some of your licensees, our LY protect, which is crazy. I mean, if you have a look, look I, I still shocked you know that we're offering it at such a ridiculous price uh, but anyway for the ly protect um, when you have a look at that um, you get all of these documents here 
Um, so we've just done the LYD will. Um, you'll be able to do the EPOA and will, so that'll do both for you. You've got there, um, uh, Catherine, where's the ACT? Is the ACT there? There it is, uh, during power of attorney ACT. But that also comes up with the LYD will, EPOA and will automation. You got that protector in there that we talked about, which is really great. And you got buy sell options as well and SMSF will. So it's really strong. Um, and when you have a look at it, um, it's uh, $395 a month, which really, or it's $3,950 per annum, which really just covers what two, two wills for a year. So, you know, it's everything else, the actual costs involved really are just a matter of time. And the, the, the more you do, the easier the system's going to get, I can tell you. I can do it 25 minutes. And I can tell you if I really want to rip through, I can, and that's for two, um, I could probably do it in a maybe 15, um, uh, 15 or, or 20 minutes if I wanted to do yours. Um, so anyway, um, look, uh, we'll be doing an official launch of the LY Protect. If you're not on a um, on any subscription, have a look at that. Um, we're also going to start doing two more um, training videos, and I will be doing some uh, full day uh, strategy training on um, on uh, this uh, asset protection estate planning as well. But I can tell you, this is ten times easier than self managed super funds, believe it or not. Um, so in a good, pretty good position. Um, look, going back, you know, for us, where are we? Australia needs your help. Oh, your help. There you go. I haven't even um, spelled it right. Australia needs your help. And it's time now for us to get out there um, and really getting invigorated and starting to build as much as we can. Because that means that once we do our own client base, we can start to work in other people's client bases. Think of all those financial planners who are giving up their databases. Wouldn't you love to have a two or 3,000 database of people who've got life insurance or had life insurance and start to sending them out these wills and their POAs? Now, even if you get 100 out of it, that 100, um, you'll see over a period of time, that 100, and if you're doing it over a, a one-year period, that's going to add quite a significant amount to the bottom line. Anyway, uh, without any further questions, it's Grant Abbott. Let me render this, get it up and running on, on the site. Great to see you next week. Um, I might do a bit of an upgrade and get those percentages out that Catherine was talking about. Um, and then we'll go through and I'll show you the LYD will and testamentary trust, um, our latest version of that. Anyway, it's Brian Abbott, signing off.